I don't really have that good of a natural spatial geometric sense. You're, I think you're supposed to if you're a mathematician. It's like sort of, those are things are supposed to be associated. But just looking up, we're sort of outside the building where I work. My office is in there somewhere. But where it is, I could not tell you. I go in there every day for 15 years. But like whether it's on this side of the building or the other side of the building or like whether it would be down there or over there, I, I truly have no idea. When I first learned geometry, um, I didn't care for it, it didn't suit me, and I think maybe that was part of it. I think it was only once I started to understand that algebra and numbers and geometry under the skin were the same, that they could be combined and sort of work together, that was my way in. I still don't know where my office is. If I'm inside, I can find it, don't worry. I know the number, that's how I, that's how I find it. Geometry is everywhere. Any kind of game, whether it's checkers, or tic-tac-toe, or connect four, or chess, or go, or whatever, the game itself has a geometry. And when you train a machine to play that game, you're training the machine to explore that geometry, and that geometry is the geometry of a tree. A tree, depending on which one you look at, it has a trunk, and that trunk branches into smaller branches, and the small branches branch into smaller branches, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you can never go back, right? That's the way a game works. That's the way any kind of linearly sequenced set of decisions works. It's the treeness of the geometry that makes those games solvable. It's, that's what makes it possible for there to be a literally perfect strategy, which is what we now have in computer checkers. So you can play, you know, you can play against the computer. It's just sitting there at the University of Alberta running all day and night, and you can log in and play against it. At some point, usually it takes about three or four moves for me because I don't really know checkers very well. It'll just be like, I have one. If what you know about geometry is like ninth grade, it doesn't seem like it could be very dangerous, but there's like a long history of seeing it that way. Geometry kind of creates a new locus of authority that's not under political control, and lots of people see that as a threat. I mean, there's this question about drawing legislative districts, which is such a hot political topic here in Wisconsin. Somebody's got to kind of sit down and cut Wisconsin into 99 parts. It seems like a technical exercise, but it actually has a huge effect on who's sitting in the legislature, who's making the laws, and in particular, who draws the next set of lines. So there's kind of a feedback. If you're like me, right, if you're trained in math, at first you're like, okay, so there's a math question here. Like, what's the right way? It's not a math question. But it's not not a math question. The math is wound up with these political questions, with legal questions, which obviously are really important, but also with fundamentally philosophical questions, because what you're really saying is what would be fair? I don't think you can answer that without doing some philosophy, but I think if you try to approach a question like that without doing any calculation and without doing any geometry at all, I think that your answers are always gonna be like a little bit flabby and unstructured. That's kind of a deep idea, and of course it's one that one is drawn to as a mathematician, that the geometry, which unfortunately so many people experience as like, I don't want to say prison, but like, you know, someplace that they have to be, uh, actually can be kind of a liberatory activity.